G'day everybody, it's Dan here at Pilates with Dan with your next tutorial video uh, for our YouTube channel. Uh, so if you're not already a subscriber, click the subscribe button and uh, you'll get stay up to date with uh, all the tutorials and all the homework sheets that we put on. Um, so today we're talking about an exercise that's near and dear to my heart. It's called the front support. Uh, so the front support is the probably one of the first exercises that we teach people here uh, to support their own body weight. Okay, so uh, the reason why I think that's important is because we're all going to get old, um, and the ability to actually uh, hold your body weight or lift your body weight is actually a really important skill to have. Okay, so. That's why we practice it so much here in the studio in both the mat work classes and also the equipment lessons. Uh, for most uh, students coming here, they'll, in their session, they'll do um, one or two support exercises. So um, the front support is usually the first version that we teach because um, firstly, it's, it's a fairly simple one to replicate at home. So as always, I want you to be practicing at home. So it's, the front support's an easy one to replicate. It uh, promotes the ability to actually support your body weight. But also, um, it's a really good exercise to sort of let you figure out where your body is in space. Because when we teach this, especially to the beginners, um, you're kind of working that out a little bit. Okay, so uh, the tutorial today is to show you what a front support would look like, some of the things that maybe um, you need to work on, and also some modifications uh, because we're all a little bit different. Okay, so first of all, the front support in a mat work um, setting is usually done uh, in our classes here in the back third, so it's in the last third of the class. Um, and that's where we kind of lump all the support exercises together. Uh, the front support being the first one is a, is a one that um, takes a little bit of practice, okay? So the first thing that you'll be doing in a mat work setting is you'll start off on your hands and knees, okay? So we call this position a quadruped position Quadruped meaning four legged, right? Okay, so, or, um, so you're on four on your four legs. Okay, so the idea here is that I want you getting used to how your body weight feels on your hands and your knees, and figuring out where you need to be. So, ideally, I want your hands to be sort of underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. So if you're sitting up and you're in this shape here, see how the knees are a little bit further away from my body? I, I want to position you so that you're evenly weighted with the knees directly beneath the hips, okay? And quite often I'll ask you to sort of figure out where centre is, okay? So um, just swaying backwards and forwards side to side, and then you'll figure out where your center is. Now the idea with the front support is that you're gonna be spreading your load, your load being your body, between your hands and your feet, and I want it to be fairly even, okay? So that when you extend your legs back behind you, the hips don't move from this starting position. So we step out, one leg at a time, and come back in one leg at a time. We start off in a beginner setting just doing that several times, just to get you used to the position. And then to build up uh, a little bit more stamina and strength, we hold the position for a number of repetitions. Okay, so the idea here is that we're holding that position for a number of breaths. Okay. And we might start off with three breaths and build to four, five, and work our way up to six. In a breath, 
it's an inhale and an exhale completely and the slower and more rhythmic the better okay simply and the only reason for that is so that we can all stay up around about the same amount of time for most average adults here in the studio a breath will take between three and four seconds so it's a sort of breath okay all right so that's about three or four seconds multiply that over the number of breaths you've got your length of time so for the more advanced um, classes we usually usually hold it for about six breaths which is about 20 to 25 seconds okay and we'll do multiples of that now so that's the that's the basic front support okay so you can see that you're holding your body weight and supporting yourself now common errors maybe not the right word um, common things that your body will do that make this harder how about that okay so what I want you to do is uh, when we do the front support, your hips shouldn't move from your start position, really. Okay. Um, so I see a lot of people when they do this movement, that they'll bring one foot out, and when the second leg comes out, the hips will drop. Okay. So we've dropped the hips. What that means is you're actually making it a lot harder for your upper body. And one of the biggest complaints people have with the front support, well, there's, there's two probably. One is that they feel it in their back, and the second is that they feel it in their wrists. Okay? So if you're actually dropping your hips down, you're going to lead yourself to do both those things. You're going to feel it in, a, in your back and not your tummy, and you're going to be hanging off your wrists way too much, than, way more than you need to. Okay. So, if you're finding that during your practice of the front support, you're not feeling super great through the wrists or through the lower back, uh, check your pelvis. Make sure that your pelvis hasn't dropped down. It, it's a really simple fix. If, whilst you're doing the front support, this is happening, lift your hips up a little bit higher. I don't mind the hips being up higher, Okay, because that's a, a really nice adjustment and it actually helps with the weight of your body. I prefer that than the, than the hips being lower. Because when the hips are lower, when you come here and you end up hanging off your shoulders, you're actually making it a lot harder to utilise the muscles that we want you to use in the front support. For a beginner, you can think of the front support as being one of those true all-body exercises that Joseph Pilates really liked. You're using, there's no one muscle group left behind with that one. Okay, so it's it's a it's a great all-or-nothing exercise. If you're feeling it in one place more than the other, maybe that's just your body that day. Okay, so if your position is all fine and you're feeling it in your wrists that day, that's okay. You're just feeling it your Think of it as a way of you sort of desensitizing tissues. <laughs> okay. Um, so if you've worked on the computer all day, being in that big flexed position for your wrists, it's not going to be fun sometimes. But on the same coin, on the other side of the same coin, is that we want to strengthen you up. And sometimes strengthening exercises are not comfortable. Okay. So I'm okay if you're not comfortable, as long as your position is pretty good. All right, the other thing that I see, the other error that many people make when they, they do this movement. So everything's looking fine here. We're stepping the first leg back, and then when they bring the second leg back, they, they bring their heels right back. So the end result being that their wrists are now much further away from your shoulders, okay? So two things are going to happen there. Because it's in the last third of the class, you might have sweaty hands, okay? So sometimes you'll see people start to slide away, okay? So if that's happening to you, it's usually because you haven't aligned your shoulders above your wrists, okay? So if that's happening, stop, reset yourself, make sure your position's right. The other thing is that as we get into the colder months here in Canberra, um, most people will be wearing socks on their feet. 
So when you go into that position, your feet inside your socks will start to slide away because they, the socks will stick to the mat. And, and I don't want that to happen either because you'll end up flat on your face. Okay, so what I want you to do is just check your position. If you feel yourself sliding, it's usually because your hands are further away from your shoulders. Okay, so you're going to have to adjust your position. As soon as you start to feel that slide, stop, reset, start again. Okay, so that's another little tip. Okay, third tip for you is that if you can't hold it for three, the set number of breaths, so in our homework sheet, say, for example, I've said you need to hold it for four breaths three times. If you can't hold it for four breaths on that last time, that's okay, you're building up your stamina. So you're just trying to get two four breaths. If on a Thursday it's two breaths, hey, it's two breaths. <laughs> okay, so just do what you can. Remember, you're trying to build stamina and strength. All right, so the third thing that happens to people when they do this exercise is they start to tire and then try and hold on for dear life. I don't mind you getting tired. I don't mind you holding on for dear life as long as your position is, is good, okay? So the example that I see most commonly is allowing your shoulders to sort of retract towards each other. So where the shoulder blades are sitting on your ribs, allowing them to retract towards each other. What we, what I teach people is you're trying to push the floor away, okay? In trying to push the floor away, your shoulder blades should go apart from each other. The reason for this being important is understanding where your shoulder blade is positioned it's a really cool skill to have, okay? It allows us to do some funky stuff later on. So the front support is one of those times that we're actually practicing the skill of knowing where the shoulder blade is positioned in, a, in an environment that's requiring some strength, right? Okay, so what I mean by the, the position with this is that we go out into the front support, everything's hunky-dory, and maybe we're up to our third or fourth repetition and starting to get a bit tiresome, okay? And what ends up happening is the body sinks down and the shoulder blades retract, okay? And we end up just holding on, I'm holding on, I'm holding on, okay? If, you, if you're someone who suffers a little bit from wrist, elbow, shoulder pain, this is a no-no zone, okay? So I have a few no-no zones that we don't want you to persist if you can't keep the position. If you've got a history of shoulder dislocation, shoulder muscle tears, we're trying to strengthen you up. In that position, you're putting those tissues under some stress, okay? Now stress is good, stress is allowing us to strengthen up, but I always want you to practice with as good a form as you can bring that day, okay? If there's some discomfort, hang on, okay? But if you're losing your shape, Time to stop. Does that make sense? I hope so. So if you're losing your shape, that's a sign that you're, you either need to refocus, maybe the cat's wandered in and you go a bit distracted, or um, it might be not time to refocus, it might be time, your body's saying that's enough for today. Okay. So there are a couple of little tips for you for your front supports. So watch your hand position, watch your pelvis position, and make sure you keep pushing the floor away, okay? So the idea, again, just going on that idea of pushing the floor away, if I'm starting to tire here, I'm gonna redouble my efforts to push the floor away, and the spine lifts up, the shoulder blades go apart, okay? I can feel it in my body. Hopefully, over time and practice, you can feel it in yours when that actually starts to happen. Okay, now, I have a few students with interesting wrists, okay? And if you're one of, if this is a, if the idea of supporting your body weight on your hands terrifies you, here's something that can help, okay? So, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a device called the push-up handles, which we don't have in the studio, but I'm hoping to get sometime soon. And they're basically two bars that you can hold on to. So, 
and they elevate it off the floor and you can and you can use those to hold on to to do your front support and your push-ups and your leg pulls and things like that. The, we know that when the, when the hand grips there, it straightens the wrist quite often and allows us to be a bit stronger or feel a little bit more stable. So when um, someone has an interesting wrist, sometimes we might tell you to go to fists. Okay, so by going to a fist, so instead of having the hand in flexion like that, by going to a fist, it straightens the wrist and allows you to, to perform your front support nicely. Now, not everybody can go onto their fists. That's pretty hardcore, right? Okay, so doing a, a, a fist push-up, or that's, that's pretty hard. So um, one adjustment we can do is hold on to a ball. So what we're doing is just allowing the wrist to straighten up a little bit and, and still work really well, okay? Plus, the other advantage of the ball is it gives you a little bit of instability and we know how much I love instability here in the studio. It's always a really good challenge for you. Okay, so the idea here is that you'll be holding on to the balls. The balls are on the mat, approximately shoulder, just under your shoulder, and you step out into your front support. So we've got a little bit of instability. It's way less flexion for the wrists. So it allows you to enjoy your front support again. Okay, so that's an option. The other option we quite, uh, quite often use is a log. And the log is a little bit more unstable than the, the ball. So we have to choose who that goes to. Um, so those who are still strong enough but maybe having a bad wrist day, a log is an option. The other option that we can do I don't like using it often, but um, it, is, it is, a, is a choice that we can go to. We can go onto our forearms. The forearm, going onto the forearm, you're still utilizing your shoulders and all your muscles along your torso and your legs. So it's still in that same classification of support work, but um, you're not experiencing the, the hand. Um, if we're thinking about the skills required that, that we're trying to practice with the front support, i.e. holding on uh, with your body weight and supporting your body weight, and how that relates to um, us as we get older. So think about getting out of bed, getting out of a chair, getting off the toilet. These are all things that will sometimes, um, for some of our older population, requires a bit of upper body strength. So if you're, if you're going down to the elbows, try and imagining how you would go in your older age if you need to get off the toilet. You're not going to be using your elbows really, right? You're going to be using your hands and wrists. So that's one of the reasons why I'm reluctant to give this as an option. However, I do have some students with um, interesting carpal tunnel issues. Um, recent fractures of the arm, that, those sort of things, and this is the time that we would give um, this as an option. So the idea is that I want you to create fists. By creating a tight fist, we're still working these muscles in the forearm, okay, and you're going to go down onto your elbows. So everything else stays the same. The hips are still in line with the shoulders. We're still looking down at the floor, okay, and we're still going to be working with our shoulders. So again, you don't want the body to sag between the shoulders. You're trying to push the floor away. And that way, it, it sort of it goes with the other front supports as well. So it is an option for you um, if we need to use it. But as I said, it's one an option that we use sparingly. Um, so where does the front support go to? Uh, so the front support can go to wonderful things like the leg pull, which we've been practicing um, this turn along with the push-up. So if you think about the push-up and the leg pull, uh, basically the leg pull is a one-legged front support, okay, and the other leg's doing something. Uh, so that's an option. The push-up is definitely an upper body strength option. And then uh, if we take it to our natural conclusion, things like handstands um, uh, are certainly another option as well. So that's our little tutorial on the front support. 
Uh, I hope you found it useful. If uh, there are any tips in there, make sure you leave a comment below or hit the like button. Uh, and we hope to see you in the studio someday soon. Bye-bye.